Waltz is a 1954 Buick Special. So the Special was um, the lowest model of the four models that they had. So you had a Buick Special, a Buick Century. Those were considered small body cars. And then you had a Buick Super and a Buick Roadmaster. And those were the larger body cars. They're a little longer, a little wider. Um, the Roadmaster, of course, being their premier vehicle. Any man who can appreciate the fine points of a car feels right at home in a Roadmaster. And the Special was their entry level vehicle. So you could get this in a Dynaflow Auto, or you could get it in a three speed column shift, uh, kind of like a farm tractor. <laughs> it drove like a farm tractor when I had it. So um, I've had this car for close to 15 years. Um, I restored it as a stock original car at one time and drove it around and then I hot rodded it as a stock original car. So I put a tri-power system on it, um, changed the white walls to mags and drove it around like that for a while and rebuilt all the running gear in it. And um, we used to like to go to car shows and hot rod runs and stuff. And um, I got stuck on the side of the highway coming back from a car show once and it was overheating and I got kind of pissed off and I was like, that's it. I'm taking this thing apart and doing it properly. So I uh, took it all apart. I ended up putting the body on a rotisserie and had my son Seth sandblasted the body all for me on the rotisserie. And uh, I thought about modifying the original chassis that was underneath it. And then, and then I started um, thinking, well, you know, I have a frame table and stuff. And I had an Art Morrison chassis in the shop. And I thought, why not just copy the Art Morrison chassis? It's right there. I've got all the measurements and dimensions and design and I've got a frame table, so why not build my own chassis? And one of the things, uh, uh, being a car builder over the years, that I noticed was Art Morrison at the time, even now a little bit, um, is a little behind the times as far as modern touring uh, performance suspension goes. And at the time I was looking at Roadster Shop, they, make, uh, they, they used to make a really nice weld-on front clip, and uh, Detroit Speed has a really amazing weld-on front clip. So I originally called Roadster Shop and I was gonna buy their front clip and uh, they stopped making it. So then I called Detroit Speed and uh, Detroit Speed had a new one out and, um, and it's a hydroformed uh, high-end front clip, uh, big, big A-arms, coilover suspension, um, billet aluminum um, spindles and um, you know, big brake kit with Willwood 14 inch brakes and all the goodies. So I went with the Detroit Speed Front Clip and uh, started building my chassis for this car. So I had some rust in the floors and I was gonna repair them, but then when I did the chassis, I realized that, you know, it needed to be a full build and um, I cut the floors and the whole back section right out of the car. Um, I mini tubbed it. I wanted to run 22s and 20s on this car and the reason for that is Buicks have really huge wheel openings like you can put a 31 inch tire on a Buick and there's a huge gap around the wheel openings the wheel openings are huge so I thought you know what fill that space put the biggest tire I could put on there that was practical without getting into um, like custom built wheels custom built rubber you can get some really amazing tires built, but I didn't want to be custom ordering those. I wanted to be able to just, you know, go to a local tire shop and say, these are, I've got 22s, you know, order the widest tire that they make and, and, and be done with it, not have custom rubber made. So that's where I, uh, that's where I went at. I had a custom 12 bolt rear end built for it. Um, I did all the metal work in here, so I had to mini tub it. So not only did I mini tub it, but I actually moved the um, tubs deep up into the car. So rather than where the wheel tub used to be, it's moved up to give clearance to the big tires. And I went up as high as I could without effect affecting the roll of the quarter panel or widening the car or anything like that. And then I, um, I did the mini tubs. I hand fabricated everything you see in here. Basically I have a little bit of um, uh, you know hammer dolly and grinding left to do on the inside here and then it's ready for body work. I'll seam seal all the metal work after the grinding is done. I'll get all the seam sealing done and then it's ready for paint. So this, this area is almost done. This hinge is broken, so there's some repairs up inside that hinge. I was considering just taking these hinges completely out and putting billet 
um, aluminum billet shocked hinges in there, um, but it takes a bit of rework and some modifying to do that. Quarter panels are off right now again, so I can uh, clean all the welding up. Uh, I'll clean up the welding. I can get in here and hammer and dolly everything nice and smooth. Uh, I can do all the seam sealing from inside the quarter panel. Then I can undercoat inside of here and get all the undercoating done. This is going to get a rubber lip on it where the rubber lip will actually seal to the quarter panel as the quarter panel comes down. So it'll have a, a rubber seal where it's, it separates the two. And then um, inside here I'll do some modifications because I'm actually going to modify this from a crank window where you would crank the window up to a power window. So I've got to do some work in here and get my power window assembly going up and down before I put the quarter panel back on. So that's a, another thing that I want to do. Then when the quarter panel's back on and the rocker is all welded back on, I'll do some uh, door fitting. I want to make sure that the door gaps are all um, better than better than factory. I'll, I'll rework all the door gaps so we get nice little tight, you know, 1 8 to 3 16 door gaps everywhere, nice and clean. Um, up in the front here, these had um, a really ugly firewall with big, um, with big blisters coming off the firewall, which was part of the uh, heating system in here, and, and a big ugly spot where the wiper motor used to sit and everything. So up inside, I'm going to do uh, electric wiper conversion, like a modern wiper conversion. I think Rain Gear makes one for a 55 Chevy, and I'm sure I can modify it to work for a Buick. This is where the vents used to be and the, the air intake for the heater and stuff, so I'll be sealing all this up and we're going to be doing vintage air in under the dash, so we'll put a vintage air system in. I'm doing a little bit of a, um, a mix of old and new, so the interior will be modern but with classic materials. So we're putting bucket seats in, uh, but I still want to go with like the classic designs on the door panels and that kind of thing. Uh, Dakota digital gauges, um, console shifter, floor shift is what I'm going to put in here. As you can see, I've got a large tunnel in there. I've also Frenched the floors for the exhaust. So there's a bunch of work making sure that the seats will fit in here because I've raised the floor quite a bit. I've also dropped the body down over the frame and unibodied it. So the frame doesn't separate from the body anymore. The body is actually part of the frame, which allows me to get the body down so low. This car is sitting as low as a car with air ride would be, but because the frame is Frenched up into the car, um, I still have like six inches of ground clearance and I'm as low as a car on air ride with all the air dumped. So it has an incredible stance. Tires are tucked right up inside of it. Um, yeah, up in front here, we've got a LS six liter block. This is an LQ4 block, basically like a van motor or a truck motor. They have a really stout bottom end, steel forged crank. Uh, I went with LS3 heads. The LS3 heads are brand new. They've been reworked for uh, for um, hardened valve or hardened um, valves and stuff like that for the turbos. I'm running a Nelson Engines uh, Nelson Racing uh, twin turbo system, uh, 60 millimeter fast spool turbos. They're mirrored, uh, mirror polished, and mirrored turbos. So one turbo is the opposite mirror image of each other, so they can be plumbed all uniform and nicely. I'm running a cross ram Edelbrock intake with dual throttle bodies. Um, I have the beautiful vintage air serpentine kit on the front here. Yeah, all the good stuff is going into it. So what I have left to do is um, quite a bit. Um, I have to make mounts for my front clip to go onto this uh, frame system. So I haven't made the mounts for the body panels to actually mount like my grill and all that, where everything's gonna mount on the front here. So I have that to do. I have to finish my firewall and the tunnel. So my tow boards and the tunnel that goes around the engine, I have to finish and um, I have to reinforce that. So I was actually gonna make a heavier walled um, firewall, but I might just reinforce the existing firewall and just finish it. But you know, it's going to have a, a brake booster coming off of here with pedals, so there has to be at least uh, either 3 16 or 1 8 steel in behind that to support all the weight of that. Um, back over here is where all the uh, hoses and, and wiring and everything will come out from the car. Um, once the engine and, or once the, the, the sheet metal is around the engine, then I will hand fabricate a surround. So I'm going to hand fabricate a nice sheet metal surround around the motor, around the turbos, 
make it look all custom, you know, and um, yeah, I'm going to be taking this engine now. So this is a, a low mileage stock block, but it's stock and it's not ready for the almost 1400 horsepower that the turbos make for this motor. So I'll be taking this down to Vancouver to Richmond Engines and uh, having the boys at Richmond Engines go through the bottom end. I'm going to balance and blueprint the bottom end and make sure that it's built to handle at least 1500 to 2000 horsepower. I'm going to try to detune and not run that much horsepower. I think maybe 8, 850 horse for reliability. Um, I just want the turbos, uh, you know, they make much more power than that, but it's all about the looks for this car and, and it's just a toy I can take to shows. I'd like to actually professionally show this car for a year, maybe two, and, uh, and then it'll be my weekend toy to take to local, local events and car shows. So that's where we're at and we're going to be getting going on this pretty soon.